how to find rest in Jesus. Welcome in my Simply Uncaged family. God bless you. Let's talk about how to find rest in Jesus, okay? And first off, we'll talk a little bit coming from Matthew chapter 11, but I want to be able to define rest according to obviously the Bible where we're going to be breaking it down because when we find our rest, we don't find rest in anything else but Jesus. Rest that gives us that energy in the soul, in our spirit, the peace, the joy that comes directly from above. So we're talking about true rest that only Jesus can give us. We don't find it in a day, in an event. We can't find it in other people, in our relationships. We find true rest in Jesus according to the scriptures. Let's go into Matthew chapter 11. Verse 28, it says, and this is Jesus speaking. Jesus says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Okay, Jesus makes this very, very clear. Those that labor and are heavy laden, that heavy laden is maybe a heavy burden, this, this heaviness, right, this heavy load. He says, if you come to me, Jesus says, if you go to him, he will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Our soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions, we're going to find rest for our souls in Jesus. Hallelujah. And I want to say rest is, and if you actually break this down in the Greek, rest is, it is, it's that relaxation. Okay, and, and rest can be relaxation. Rest can also be through our labor, through our activity, through our very own work and our very own hands, okay? Everyone has different forms on how they see rest. I tell people, hey, I rest six to eight hours a day. I'm resting, I'm, which is my sleep. But finding rest, finding that that peace and joy and, and the relaxation in what I'm doing and how I'm living and how I'm moving, right? We're called to be a living sacrifice for the Lord. And what does that mean? And how can I find true rest and joy in what I do? Well, we find that through Jesus, our purpose, our meaning on why we do what we do. We got to find our worth in Christ and our worth only comes from God. So let's find what rest truly is. And I'm going to give you guys a quick story in Mark chapter 6 where Jesus is telling his disciples to rest. Okay, this is Mark chapter 6. And he tells his disciples to rest. And it's interesting because they're getting, they're pretty much coming, you know, after after them, the King Herod, uh, the religious leaders at this point. And, he, you know, Jesus is calling them. And let's just read what the scriptures say. And he's telling them to rest. Mark chapter 6, verse 30. Then the apostles gathered to Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said to them, come aside by yourself to a deserted place and rest a while. So Jesus is withdrawing them from the multitudes, from the crowds, from everyone that's coming after them, King Herod, the religious leaders, people that are already seeing Jesus' miracles. And he says, hey, come over here to this deserted place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. Verse 32, so they departed to a deserted place in a boat by themselves. And this is the interesting part because Jesus is saying, hey, let's rest. But Jesus starts feeding the multitudes and he's actually, his, his heart is moved with compassion to be able to provide for those that are hungry. So we see Jesus saying, hey, we need to rest him and his disciples, but they're still allowing miracles to take place. And I'll read a bit about this in verse 33. So we're in Mark 6, 33. But the multitude saw them departing and many knew him and ran there on foot from all the cities. They arrived before them and came together to Jesus. And Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them. Again, this is Jesus wanting to always provide, always help. His heart is to help, to, to offer himself as a living sacrifice. And he was moved with compassion, it says because they were like sheep not having a shepherd. So Jesus began to teach them many things. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came to Jesus and said, this is a deserted place and already the hour is late. Send them away that they may go into the surrounding country villages and buying themselves bread for they have nothing to eat. But Jesus answered and said, you give them something to eat. Jesus is like, yo, we gotta provide. And they said to Jesus, shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? But Jesus said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they found out, they said five and two fish. So Jesus is like, yeah, we, we got to use what we have. 
Long story short, Jesus provides, and it says this in verse 44. So, or let's let's actually go to verse 40, 41. And when Jesus had taken the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven, right? Jesus looked up to heaven, blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them and the two fish he divided among them all. So they all ate and were filled and they took up 12 baskets full of fragments and of the fish. And those who had eaten the loaves were about 5,000. So Jesus did a miracle with just five and two fish, five loaves and two fish and fed 5,000 men, 5,000 people. What's so interesting is seeing how the miracle was birthed. I mean, Jesus had compassion. He was moved. He saw the compassion, the multitude, seeing that they were sheep with no shepherd, meaning they were wandering, they were starving, they were hungry, not just in the physical, but in the spiritual. And what Jesus did was when he took the very thing that they had, and instead of telling his disciples to go buy bread in the marketplace, he said, hey, let's see what we have and let's see what the Father can do. Looked up into heaven, blessed it, and broke it. And then he gave the disciples and it multiplied. This shows me how we can still find miracles and blessings in the very things that we just have. And even though they were trying to find physical rest, a way of Jesus, his heart to be moved with compassion was still to be able to allow miracles to birth through him. And I want to encourage you guys, you know, that yes, we can find rest in Jesus. And how do we find rest in Jesus? I'm going to give you guys three ways on how to find rest in Jesus. I wanted to share this story because Jesus was laboring even though he told to his disciples to, to rest because of everything that was going on, right? Like Jesus' ministry was being shared all across and people were starting to hear about the miracles, the signs, the wonders. The Pharisees were after him. King Herod, even the king at that time was after them, but they were still doing the works of the Lord. And sometimes the enemy wants to use overwhelm, use doubt, hindrances, distractions, and wants to bring all sorts of things upon you to stop. And we can find relaxation. We can find rest in relaxation. We can find rest in our labor. We can find rest in the activity that we're doing. And I'm gonna show you guys three ways on how to find rest to know that even when you're moving, you can still find rest in Christ, okay? So number one is in Isaiah 40, 31, the number one way to find rest, uh, one way is to wait on God, is to wait on the Lord, okay? Not meaning that you just don't move, Waiting on God means being positioned for God to allow his miracles to take place. I mean, Jesus was positioned for the miracle to birth and his disciples. And then, right, they looked up to heaven. They broke the bread. You might be gracefully broken. They blessed it and then it multiplied. Waiting upon the Lord is not just saying, I'm going to be still. Waiting upon God, being still means being positioned. Isaiah 40, 31 says, but those who, who hope in the Lord will renew their strength, right? And another version, which we're reading is, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. What is this telling us? We got to wait on God, be positioned for God's blessings. So how do we find rest in the Lord is to wait on God. That's number one. Number two on how to wait on God or how to rest in God's presence and how to rest, find rest in Jesus. Number two is in Philippians chapter three. You need to let go of the past. Philippians chapter three, verse 13. It says, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching towards those which are ahead. We have to let go of the past, the things that keep us in bondage. We need to allow Jericho walls to fall down so we can rebuild the Jerusalem wall. Old thoughts, old ways of doing ministry, old ways of thinking that doesn't really attach to the kingdom. Sometimes it's something we need to unlearn so that God can give us a fresh revelation to learn. Let go of the past. Don't play the victim when we can focus on Jesus who had already claimed the victory because of what he did at the cross of Calvary. Let go of the past. Don't bring it up in your, in your term because sometimes we start believing the lies of the past. 
So in order to find rest in God, we need to know who we are in Christ, but we have to let go of the things behind us. This is what Apostle Paul is saying, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching towards those things which are ahead. And I love the next verse in verse 14. He says, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So number two is we got to let go of the past. This is how we find rest in Christ. Number three on how to find rest in Christ is in Philippians chapter four. Number three is don't worry, pray about it. Don't worry, pray about it. It says be anxious for nothing. Philippians four, six, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So when we pray, don't worry, pray about it. How to find rest? Because the enemy wants to bring, like I said, distraction, disruption, wants to bring doubt, anxiety, all sorts of things, wants to instill fear upon us. But be anxious for nothing and everything through prayer and supplication, making your requests be made known to God. Give them thanksgiving, it says. And when you pray, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will be able to guard our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. So don't worry, pray about it. When you start to feel things coming inside, pray about it, right? Ask the peace of God to be upon you, to fill you up, to give you clarity, to be able to block hindrances and allow God's will and allow God's truth to fill you up, to be able to let go of all the lies that the enemy tries to put in your head, empty yourself of the lies in your head so you can fill yourself up with the truth which is the word coming directly from the Father. So these are different ways on how to find rest in the Lord. Again, these are the three ways to find rest in God. Number one is wait upon the Lord, right? To find your rest in Christ, to find rest in Christ that he can give your souls rest. Number two is let go of the past, the bondages, the thoughts, unlearn the labels, all the titles that has tried to attach onto you. And the last thing, number three, is we got to be able to not worry about it, but pray about it. Don't worry, pray about it. This is three simple ways on how to get that, that, that journey started on finding rest in Christ and know that rest isn't just physically resting your physical body. Rest comes with relaxation. It comes with a peace of mind. And we search for that peace in the Prince of Peace. I want to be able to give y'all a bonus. Psalms 37, I'm just going to read a couple verses and to give you guys a few more, few, a few revelation on how to really find rest in the Lord. Psalm 37 verse 1, Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord. This is verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Rest in God. Rest in the Lord. Find your rest in Jesus. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, Jesus says. He says, for his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Find rest in Christ alone. Find rest in Jesus. And these are simple ways on how to find rest in Christ. If you guys enjoyed this stuff, go ahead. You guys can tap the like, hit the sub. Any questions, drop them below. We love y'all. You guys have a blessed rest of your week and feel free to reach out again. You guys can email us, send us any questions. God bless you. Take care in Jesus' mighty name. Bye-bye.